Hello everyone, this is Shilpa here. Now let's um, look at a case where um, I use this approach because the normal conventional homeopathic medicines used for kids did not really um, have an effect. This was a boy who came to me um, in about 1999 when I was um, just in practice. He was five years old and the, the family had just moved back to India. Um, the boy was born in the US and since they have they had been in India for about four to five months this boy had um, frequent motions and you know with flatus and this sort of a chronic uh, dysentery which the, di the doctors had diagnosed as, as a mimic dysentery uh, but it was not responding to any conventional treatment so the mother was quite frustrated and um, you know there were lots of um, restrictions on the child and, and she she did not really, um, give, you know, she didn't give him any sort of um, water unless it was boiled and he was on mineral water. And she tried lots of homeopathics as well, but nothing seemed to really work. The other complaints this child had was um, recurrent ear infections and tonsillitis and nosebleeds um, since he was younger. Now, the mum gave quite a good history actually. She she explained how this child was really um, very intelligent and um, he had all these early milestones but the teachers had a lot of problem with this child because he just could not sit in one place and concentrate. He was very restless and, and hyperactive in a way and he, he mentioned it was quite boring to be in class and he was easily distracted and nothing could keep him in one place for a long time. Um, he threw things in anger and he was always, you know, up to something and excited. So um, the, they were also suspecting ADD in this child. Um, he could not sleep alone in the dark. He had lots of uh, fears of um, darkness and monsters. And But he also explained that he had quite a few funny dreams where he used to laugh and, you know, it was quite exciting. He had craving for a lot of foods, so he craved for sweets and candies and chocolates, which all kids do, milk and peanut butter. But he also, he the mom said she didn't, uh, she was really confused what to actually serve him because every day he wanted a new new thing. So he loved a variety of things and he didn't really like the same thing all the time. Now. He had tried quite a few homeopathics, as I've said before, at stage one and two. So I thought, let's work at stage three directly. Um, and based on whatever the mum you know, explained in the first interview, I gave him tuberculinum. And later on, I gave him argentum nitricum. And I don't remember, quite a few remedies, actually, without much relief. And I, I just thought, there is something very peculiar about this child, but I just don't understand what exactly and how can I actually put that in, in a you know understanding of my, the mental state. So I thought the mom always mentioned that he's so similar, he's so much like his father, and they are really you know they get along very well, and the father is never there because he he's traveling a lot. So I said I wanted to speak with the father because I thought there might be a correlation between the father's state uh, and this child's state. So that was how we finally got this father to come along um, one day. Now the father was, um, he, was he, he mentioned he was very hurried and restless as a child and he found things very, very slow. So at school he had problems as well. He learned very quickly and he said I was way beyond the teacher's pace and I just thought classroom talk was absolutely boring. He was very distracted in school. And, he, and I asked him, what was it? What happened in the classes? And he said, I had so many ideas and I wanted to overcome intellectual challenges and I found maths and science very stimulating, but he was way ahead. And um, that was really frustrating. He finished his entire MBA program, which, which normally took four years, in two years. And he said, I seek challenges. I love going places and I, and I love exploring different cultures. And that was the reason he liked his present job, because they never stayed in one place for a long time. The family was constantly moving. So he was this sort of a successful businessman and he had these offices in different parts of the globe and he was constantly traveling. And he says, I have to invent new challenges because I get absolutely bored in a routine office job. 
And then I said, we have to talk about this because this is exactly what I see in this child. So he said, I feel very stagnated, underutilized and very bored. I'm channelized to more productive work. I want to just take in as much as I can, soak in as much as I can because I never get tired. He never gets tired of working if he, it's really interesting. Any new idea produces this sort of a rush within me, like a positive feeling. He explained quite well. He said, it's like a light bulb which goes in my head, you know, it's like this all-powerful, all-knowing, as if I'm in a roller coaster, and it's like the pit of my stomach. I had such a lot of motion sickness in childhood. So I don't know, he connected this sort of this feeling in the roller coaster feeling with this sort of a motion sickness feeling he had during childhood. He says, I'm a thrill seeker. I seek pleasure. I just think, what are the limits to which somebody can experience pleasure? He mentioned science fiction really fascinates him. You know, this imagination, 2,000 years and beyond in the future, what could happen? You know, what could happen beyond the speed of light? His favorite movie was Matrix. He thought that was absolutely pushing your boundaries, you know, pushing your limits and stimulating your senses. He said, I feel really trapped with these early responsibilities she, he has, you know. He, he loves his family, he loves his, you know, kids and wife, but it was really boring to be at home with them. And and then he he came back to the suffering he was talking about, um, you know, poor kids on roads in India, and he says, I'm very sensitive, and I don't know really what to do. I just block myself because otherwise this sensation will crush me. He had lots of cravings, and he said, I have this craving for sweets, and this is one craving I've not been able to conquer, which means he's been trying to really suppress the other cravings, and I don't want it to control me. So that was it. The father came for a very short time, about an hour, and this is like a concise form of the interview which happened. But you can absolutely see the connection between what the child's having and the, what the father is really doing. Okay, so the child is similarly bored and distracted. He's very restless and wants to do new things. He loves this variety in food. You know, every second day he has to have something new. And even in the consulting room, he just couldn't remain in one place. You know, I had a, a box full of toys and he just couldn't, he was too bored. You know, they were really boring and he played with all of them and he wanted something new. So that was really hard for him to really keep him inside the consulting room. And the mother had to constantly, so he went along in the waiting room and the mother had to constantly bring him back. And the father was similar. This was a man who was bored very easily. He seeks thrill, he seeks excitement, and this sensation of, you know, stagnation and dullness, everything is too boring. And the child had lots of vivid dreams, which were, and, and so did the father. So dreams and adventures, which is exactly the opposite of this boring, unexciting, routine life. So that was the theme which came up. Now, how do we analyze this case? Now, to start with, I thought there were two very um, important themes in this case which my remedy needs to have. And these two things, um, I looked into the repertories and the remedies, and there were two things which I put in. One was boredom and one was excitement ameliorates. And he had been given Naxomega several times which hadn't really created an effect but I thought Piper Met was a very important remedy here. Piper Met which was quite interesting never heard of it before. Um, I might have read about it somewhere that was something at the back of my mind but never really um, knew this remedy in detail so I thought let's have a look and I read the other rubrics of, of this remedy Piper Metasticum. Now this is the remedy made from the pepper family, the black pepper family, and this particular remedy, it's actually a tonic. It's a stimulant, and it's um, the common name is kawa kawa, and it, it's like an intoxication. You no, know, it intoxicates people, and it produces this sort of a pleasurable excitement when people drink it, and um, this need to work without any fatigue, so they can work endlessly without fatigue. And I thought that was very interesting. And all these rubrics, amusement, desire for, excitement ameliorates, exhilaration and pleasure, liveliness and, you know, boredom. They're very bored and entertainment ameliorates. There were lots of ideas and need for change and this need to work without any exhaustion and lots of hurriedness. And then I read 
the situational matter america i thought this was at the delusional level and i thought let's look at the situational matter america so in the spirit of homeopathy i've read about this remedy where um shankaran mentions about piper metastasticum in that at, during that time he had, didn't have a case but he said this could be the situation or the delusion of the remedy and that was the reality was too dull and boring and painful and he escapes into this world of fancies and if you read ellen's um, encyclopedia he's given it very beautifully the way how this person when he drinks it gets into this whole state of pleasure and excitement and um that sort of a stimulation so for me this prescription confirmed with both the proving data and also this code delusion which was very common for the father and the child so the state of the father was expressed in the child and i thought this was the remedy for both of them but i gave it to the child now today if i look at stage 4 this is exactly the sensation of the pepper family where the sensation is there is pain there's no excitement and it's all boring and it's all monotonous and unexciting and routineist and the opposite is amusement and pleasure and desire for change and diversion so there's a very peculiar rubric here in piper met headache better by diverting attention which is you know this painful reality much better by distracting himself so the child was given the remedy in a 200 and the obstinate diarrhea stopped within a couple of days and that was such a relief because it just went on and on this child was with me for about 2 months and i really admired the mother's persistence to be with homeopathy for that long he followed up for about 6 months after that and um he improved at every level the first thing the two teachers noticed was this concentration and that was such a relief the mother said he's concentrating he's back into work and he can focus for a longer time in school the throat infection responded to the same remedy so that was another positive and in that whole time there was no recurrence of the diarrhea and the dysentery so that was piper met for me um and since then that remedy has really been indicated for so many people different other um adults as well as kids so um this sort of a connection with you know and piper met would never have been uh, possible if i was just sticking to my regular matra medica and the understanding so it was just this venturing beyond and understanding the father i could get the piper met in the child so hope this um helps you uh, you know look into your cases where you were struggling a bit and and find some sort of a connection there and hopefully unlock your cases Thank you so much and I look forward to hear your responses and feedbacks. Thanks again until next time. Bye bye.